What's up, y'all? It's Fozzie Whitaker here. You're watching Third and Longhorn. Like and subscribe. Hook em. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another special edition of Third and Longhorn. Today, we have something a little different, a little bit outside of the football field, but someone who's very important to the University of Texas. We have a very special guest, the executive director of Texas X's. Mr. Chuck Harris. Yeah. Chuck, welcome. Good to be here. Good to be here. <laughs> you guys so know, I feel like it's, uh, don't gang up on me here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got to be a little intimidating. We got a full, and, and by the way, this is the this is one of the first times we've ever had the full squad mm, all at once rare. with the guests. Yeah. With so, the yeah. Chuck, you know what that means. That's how special you are. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm touched. Yeah. I'm, I'm touched. <laughs> yes. Well, Chuck, we always start this off the same way, and it's generally, you know, when we're talking to, to kids on the team, it's a, what brought you to Texas? And I know you came from Texas, basically, but give us a little background on how you got here. Uh, well, I won't get, I'll go the short version. My uh, father was in the Air Force, so we lived out on Bergstrom Air Force Base, and they used to bus the Catholic kids and the deaf kids in from the Air Force Base. And so we would ride in together, and we would drop the kids off at the Texas School of the Deaf, and then we would drop off at St. Austin's downtown. So you had to ride a bus in, and it went once a day. <laughs> and so if you played a sport, you had to have a parent come pick you up. And it was way out in the country back then. So 5 o'clock, same time became 6 o'clock. So you'd sit out there, and we'd wander across the street. You know, St. Austin's on Guadalupe. We'd wander across the street and Frisbee and hacky sack, and there'd be students <laughs> over there. And I thought, my God, this is where I'm going to college. <laughs> they were super cool, and they... Let a little middle school kid come in and play with them. So it was awesome. So I think that probably was it. Uh, we moved back east, and um, I said, well, I'm going back to Texas. Oh, I'm going back to Texas. That was sort of my mantra from there. So I ended up, back then, you could actually get in. You know, so I, they, let, they let me in. I'm not sure I could get in today. Um, but I was, uh, you know, I represent the solid C student, uh, and I'm proud of it. But I was able to get in and got out in five short years. There we go. Uh, exactly. that, right. Right. Hey, you got out. Finance yeah. degree, yeah. Chuck, yeah. you know they say, like, the, the students that make the C's are the, are the ones that change the world. <laughs> <laughs> But no, uh, I want to tell us, <laughs> me, me and Nick. <laughs> uh, That'd be a little high for me. What, yeah. know, what is the, the, the Texas X for those that don't know? Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, I've been doing this job for almost eight years, and we have 570,000 alums. Ooh. And you guys can tell Chris Del Conte that's the number because he, he fluctuates between, <laughs> you know, five and seven. Yeah. Yeah. I love the number. So Chris is a good friend, but it's 570,000. And um, a lot of them really don't, a lot of people don't know what we do. So I'm glad you asked that. Um, we're a 138 plus year organization. Um, we were really started, you know, back in the 1800s, late 1800s. And it was a group of students got together. We were the first scholarship on campus. And so a group of kids got together and said, or grad, just as they graduate, let's, let's do a scholarship. So that was kind of the founding of it. Mm -hmm. It's like the exes were alums who felt passionate about their experience at university and wanted to give it back mm -hmm. to the, like, the next generation coming behind them. So they, they started that first scholarship fund. So it has been, you know, really kind of our true north since then is like the people were, we were a very mission oriented organization, small, scrappy team, 55 or so folks in the organization. Um, and we spent a lot of our time and all of us are touched in some way with the college experience and how it changed our life. Mm -hmm. And so everybody that works there, yeah, you make a, a paycheck. You don't go working for a nonprofit to make money. First of all, you do it because you care. And <laughs> it's a, true. like I said, it's a mission business. And, um, and it's all about like that life changing experience and how can we make that available to more people? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the first, uh, order of business. Um, the, the second leg of the stool is we are a separate 501 C three. So we're able to do some things that are challenging for the university. We can mm -hmm. do things at the Capitol. We can, uh, operate in different ways because mm -hmm. we're, we're outside of the state, uh, agency. We're an independent 501c3. So uh, we do we do some work there. And the third is just keeping us all connected. Yeah. Like the, the it's a network, it's yep. community and like um, wherever you travel in the world, there's we all felt it. There's something magic about being a Longhorn. So my job is to keep that fire lit. Mm. And if I can sort of 
crank it up a little bit, yeah. let's do that too. And, we, and we've got some ideas how we're going to do that too. How, how'd you originally get started wanting to work or, or be a part of and be the executive director of the Texas Exes? What was your timeline or path looking like that got you back? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I don't know how long this podcast is, but uh, <laughs> I started in uh, financial services. So I graduated from the business school I uh, wanted to be a stockbroker, an unapologetic capitalist. Like, I want to go to work and make money. And, you know, I, yeah. I put myself to school. So I had a little debt, worked in the oil field in the summers, that sort of thing. Um, and just your career, sometimes you pick it, sometimes it picks you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was probably more of the latter and ended up in various businesses along the way. My last business is I, I ran a company in town that – um, was focused on un and underbanked consumers. We built the digital uh, bank account that you could download and, and we would make financial services available to uh, consumers that um, were challenged. And what I came to learn in that uh, was there's, there's how important education is. I mean, I had my own journey at the time, but how important education is. We started a foundation inside that company and we started, we made it the mission, one of the missions of the company is to raise double the household income of our cardholders. And we we're going to do that through self-employment and higher employment. Self-employment, start your own business. Mm -hmm. Think about side hustle, side gig. Higher employment, get a better job. Mm -hmm. And so we started doing essentially scholarships for our, our consumers, our customers. They would apply and we'd have sort of a big cool thing where we'd award these scholarships. And we started to see for not a lot of money, for like... We, I think the average around $5,000 was the, was the scholarship, but people would, uh, and it wasn't always going to college. It was, I want to be a underwater welder, mm -hmm. or I want to do this. I want to be a commercial, get a commercial driver's license. We could see the impact mm -hmm. that, so, cause we were their bank. So I would see their direct deposit and then we'd see our <laughs> scholarship kick in and I would watch the, yeah. I'm like, my God, for that, there's so many people that just lived on the the edge right. that just five Check grand was so out of reach right. that if you could just give them a little hand up, yeah. it would literally, yeah. And we could see significant anyway. So that became a passion of mine in the business is like, I want to, I, 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 you have it sort of in, in, intuitively, you understand for yourself what education means, but when you see it in front of you and like the, how broad and how, like I said, how could I do that at scale? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what better way? Your alma mater comes knocking yeah. and says, hey, would you like to come do this? And I said, well, what? you know, I didn't even know really. I, mean, I had football tickets at then, and I wasn't really that clued in to what the exes did. I know they had the tailgate and all the stuff mm -hmm. they did. Um, Which that tailgate is great. Though. Yes, it is a fantastic <laughs> tailgate. Well, we'll get to yeah, that. That's, a, that's on the list. <laughs> and when I, to talk when about. I learned about, like, hey, our job is to make this school available to kids that can't afford it. I'm like, man, I'm in. Let's mm -hmm. go do it. Yeah. And so that's, that's how I got here. Yeah. I know that's made you pretty. Uh, we all know you. Everybody kind of knows you on campus. You're, you're a notable figure now Thank in you. the Texas Appreciate community. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Thanks for that little commercial. Yeah. 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 Hurry up, man. Yeah. 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 Some money before this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking, like, right. um, as you travel. Yeah. And and like you said, five hundred and seventy thousand alone. Mm -hmm. Kind of spread out all over the world. Yeah. And and you are so closely associated with what the Texas Texas is. I imagine you run into alum all over the place. So then I guess I'm asking, what has been some of the most like out of mind places that you run into alum? And mm. then give me, I guess, your most interesting story when running into an alum. There are some stories. Out of mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've had, uh, I'll leave it. I've had um, my annual physical exams kind of story. <laughs> like, I've had a couple of those. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I, I would say, um, so uh, I was in a, and I'll try to make not all of these about I was in a bar somewhere. <laughs> it tends to be, we all, we all know Longhorns and Joy. Uh, we, we, we learned a lot of things on campus, and one of them was fellowship. Well, yeah. 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 Um, what a word. Yeah. What a word. And so, um, you know, and it's kind of neat with our color, you know, our burnt orange. It kind of sticks out no matter where you are. And, um, and so I was a bar in London. And I had my hat on, and, you know, I have a little Texas Exit logo on the back of it, and and I mean, this is, you could tell, I tell a hundred versions of this airport bar, whatever. Um, and it's a tap on the shoulder and it's a person you meet. Um, I would, as I think about it, the person asked that question, it was my wife. Because mm -hmm. 
my wife um, has to endure like every like this <laughs> spring break. I was out in Los Angeles, and as and every and she's after the seven or eight years we've been doing this. If I see Bernard, I go introduce myself. I say, mm-hmm. "Hey, you're obviously so I'm in a we're in a steak joint in um, Hermosa Beach, okay. and and it's a it's not like Eddie V's. It's a little neighborhood strip center. And there I see in the corner is some guy with a Longhorn hat on, and I walk over. Tell him who we are. He's like, well, you all sit down here. And like, <laughs> we're like, we sit down. There's like five people. We're like shimmying in the yeah. seat. Like, and so, I mean, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Is that where you travel in the world, you meet another Longhorn. It's, it's we're all friends. We just haven't met yet. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. So yeah. the question is, when we meet, you just add them to the Rolodex. Another great, I'm just sort of riff, riffing yeah. on that. <laughs> we have something called the tr- Flying Longhorns. And it's, uh, it's a, a travel program that they have that you can fly. We do 80 trips a year. And so think about it, we we put trips together and alumni can sort of buy a seat. So we'll have 15, 20 people go and they'll go to Egypt or whatever, wow. right? All over the world. Uh, really cool. Right out to all of you. you haven't been on a flying longhorn trip. Check it out. Um, like, run I'm my commercial. Run right my now. commercial here. Right. But we'll flash a URL. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> Yo, that we had a passenger come back and they were on a Nile trip up the Nile, okay. like on one of those skinny boats with the long oh, yeah. thing out yeah. the back. He sends me his picture, and I mean, this is a when I say restaurant, I don't mean. I mean. That's a long, you have to squint really hard for it to have been a restaurant. I mean, it is, I don't know what it was, but there on the top of the restaurant was a little Longhorn and Laside Longhorn. No, now, don't tell the license these guys at <laughs> Athletics. But there's somebody on the Amazon there's using your logo on the Nile. 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 Using your logo. Um, somebody uh, in the office just uh, is Googling right now. Honest to God, halfway up the Nile, there's a, there's a little place you can go get a cold beer that's got a, a Longhorn thing over the door. Uh, anyway, That's that is fantastic. Bit, and, let me ask you this. Since you, you know all the stats, and I'm sure you do, what state outside of Texas has the most Texas exes? Mm. Uh, probably California. There you go. Yeah, um, that makes sense. There's, uh, that makes yeah. sense. But we have them everywhere. Yeah, there's true. alumni all over, over the world. We have, uh, I think, one of the really unique things, and I think what I love is we have, Austin is like, when I graduated, we all wanted to stay, but there was no jobs. Like everybody <laughs> wants to be here in Austin. And what the beauty is now, Austin's kind of prospered and flourished right. is that we have right. something like 150,000 of our alumni within 40 miles. Yeah. Wow. So that's Austin amazing. has got, which is like really cool. And we're, wow. and that's why on game day, you know, people are coming in and, yep. you know, it's, and so people have either stayed or stayed close. Yep. Yep. Uh, which is great. But we have uh, alumni all over the world. Um, we have chapters. So our, if you think about the Texas X's, um, being local is really important, right? Because there's 140 within 40, but that leaves, what, 500, 400 elsewhere, right? right. Um, yeah. 430,000, that'd be my math teacher, be very proud there of that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, but, C, C, C level math. We don't yeah. do math I'm not five. sure, let me get my phone out. No, I, can, no, no. I can double check. <laughs> Someone fact check that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but, um, the chapters that we have, so we have in most major markets, there's a group, volunteer group of alums, hardworking, that are, that are um, think of them as almost like franchises of the mm-hmm. ones here. That's a horrible word, but I just don't have a better one. They're mm-hmm. part of us, but they're alumni run. They have governance. They, they've got a lot of latitude. We support them. We give them marketing support. Uh, we help them any way we can. Um, and they have meetups, game watches, mm-hmm. scholarship dinners. They're out raising money for scholarships for kids coming from whatever town yeah, they're in. Yeah. Uh, so that keeps it vibrant, keeps the community alive. Mm-hmm. We can't do it all from here. You yeah. got to have everything's local at mm-hmm. the end of the day, especially the kind of the community that you create. It's about going somewhere and being together. And it's mm-hmm. not all about Zoom and all that. You got to like yeah. experience each other. And so the chapters do that. And then we have affinity groups that are that are uh, also we have um, different types of affinity groups do that. They do the same thing. So, um, Chuck, um, when I was playing, uh, I've heard of Texas Exes, but um, I thought it was far away because I was playing. I was a current player. Yeah. But, uh, um, uh, it, it was actually closer than I thought, even though I played a long time in the league. Uh, Texas X is, uh, is something that's uh, valuable for all of us and it supports all of us. As soon as we leave mm-hmm. the University of Texas, what do you do for current players? Because we have a lot of current players on here. How can they use Texas X's as a resource right now before yeah. they yeah. leave? Um, 
That's a great question. Um, we do, uh, I think there's a couple ways. Well, there's a lot of ways. Um, we, we, uh, and I'll get into a little bit, the we got a, we've created a business network and we, so first of all, the scholarships, we're all about students. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, we've got 800 scholarships on campus. So almost 10% of the incoming class is on one of our scholarships. Oh. And so athlete, not at whatever, right. It's across the board. So we're super active with students, if you will, in terms of either on our scholarship or some of the things we do. And it's, you know, we want to, we do everything from run the camp. I'll get to the athlete question in a minute, yeah, yeah. but we run the, you know, camp Texas. So when they come, we have a camp three day camp, uh, as they're registering and they can come in and go to camp make, you know, how do you make a big place seem small, make a friend. Mm. And so there's a camp, you go there, you make your first set of friends. So when you show up on your first day, you already know somebody yeah. you're not wandering around. I remember when I got here, I didn't go to camp and I was like, <laughs> the old trick, there's that guy's a freshman. I'm asking where some biology building is. And, oh yeah, it's way over there. Yeah. And, it's, oh, and, they, and they give you the wrong, wrong one too. Right. They always yeah. give me the wrong one. Yeah. You know, you avoid that. Um, and so, so, uh, you know, we're very much interested in when a student comes in is that they, they that this place is everything it can be for them. Yeah. Uh, as it relates to athletes, you know, we work with uh, Ricky and others and we, we, you know, admittedly, I would say we probably haven't done the greatest job. And I, and I think it's, it's um, like everything here, there's a lot of uh, resources and sometimes they're siloed or bucketed or in their different places, uh, all well intended, yeah. uh, but just not, uh, made available. Um, but we, we try to get, uh, we've got, uh, something called hooked in. I'll run another commercial. So it's a networking platform mm, Yeah, and it is something that we created during the pandemic. Do y'all remember when it was like 30% unemployment rate? Oh my God. There's, yeah. there's just, yeah. it was yeah. horrible. Yeah. And we said our job now, what do we want? What, what, what does, what do we, be, what do we want to be recognized for what we did in this moment? Mm. And, yeah, you can whine and complain and say, oh, this is so bad. Or we said, or you can do something about it. So we worked hard, scrambled, found a provider, launched a networking platform for the goal of saying, hey, you, all you kids that came in as freshmen came into UT as the greatest economy in modern history. And you're going to graduate, and it's the worst oh, economy any of us can remember. We should right? blame it on Four you. years later. Look what you did. And so Look what can we did. do is we can like connect them to, so we create this platform where students can connect with businesses and yeah. other alums. And, yeah. and so that is not, it doesn't ask you if you're an athlete or not. Yeah. It says, are you a student or not? Yeah. And so you should there go you go. in and register and connect. And, you, and I think for me, what I hope someday, uh, really, and, and I think I'd love to sort of follow up with you guys, is our network alums should be part of the equation of recruiting an athlete. When you come here Victor. and you're gonna play, yeah. why wouldn't we say we got, what you know, you're going to be in whatever uh, athletic profession you want to be, yeah. but those don't last forever, no. right? right? And right. we have alums doing amazing things everywhere. Why wouldn't you take advantage of that? Yeah. Like, yeah, why absolutely. wouldn't we? And so that's what we're trying to do is make that available to everybody, including athletes, and say our job. I, all I care about is your success as an alum. That's all. That's my why mm -hmm. I do this job yeah. is that when you graduate and we can, we have the largest, most powerful alumni network, I think in the world. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is we, so our job is how do we make it easy for y'all to find each other and tap in and connect and do it at scale. When yeah. I came in, I promise you the, the first week I get a call, it says, um, someone, some, uh, kid graduating says, Hey, I'm moving to Boston. Do you know anybody in real estate? And like, literally I walk down the hall and go, Hey, does anybody know anybody in Boston in real estate? That's Not scalable, awesome. man. Awesome. It doesn't scale. And someone said, oh, yeah, I know a guy and whatever, right? Um, so that's why we said we need something that recognizes this. This isn't Rice. Yeah. Beautiful school, awesome school. They, can, they have the luxury of small numbers. Yeah. We have the luxury of big numbers. Yeah. Yeah. And so we got to figure out how to do things at scale. And so anyway, long story. No, I mean, no I mean, absolutely. I know, I know AO about to... Uh, chime in, but I wanted to talk about Hooked In too. I, yeah. I, we were talking about it before you came on. I was a part of that. I signed up. I'm still on there. Signed yeah. up. You know, willing to meet with people. I had two people actually reach out to me. Good. So I, 
Yeah. I guess that made me feel old too. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, that's, that's accurate. Right. That's, that's wise. Right. Wise. wise. <laughs> Not all wise. One, one of them, wise. I like yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Man, it's a man. Yeah. 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 One of them reached out to me. It, it had nothing to do with sports. Neither one of them had nothing to do with sports. They both were actually interested in my career path of getting on ESPN and Longhorn Network. Right. Uh, so I messaged one of the first individuals, a young lady. Just talked about the path that got me to where I was at then. And then there was another young man that actually asked to do like a Zoom one-on-one meeting Mm -hmm. with me. So Mm -hmm. I got to have the opportunity. Man, we get on Zoom and we originally was only scheduled for like 15 minutes. Man, we talked for like an hour. Yeah. And he was a current student at the time. So the Hooked In program, it it definitely helped me connect with some of the young cats that are going through college now or or just graduated. So I think that's a good thing Mm -hmm. along with that. The Texas Exes. Whenever I played in Carolina, I played there for five seasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Charlotte chapter, Scott, who runs the Scarlet, uh, Charlotte chapter, was very integral in being active, number one, in the Charlotte community. Yeah. But then also, I showed up, man. I would have the watch parties there on Saturday. Whenever I finished walkthroughs before the game, if it was a home game, man, we'd go to a local bar or, or pub or wherever for the for the Texas yeah. watch party. I got the flags out, man. Mm. Watching the games every single Saturday. Yeah. So nice. the the effect that Texas Exes has, not just from a standpoint of being in the Austin area, but man, if I could feel it in Charlotte, if I can touch an individual that just graduated, I want to be a, a, a living testament that sure. what your work is is doing, it's actually working and it's yeah. and it's benefiting not only me, but all those around. Well, I, I, I'll take I'll speak for him. I'll thank you for that. Like it's important. Yeah. It's easy. I'm sure you were busy and had a lot of demand on your time that you would take the time to go support that chapter because it is hard work. That's a volunteer gig. Absolutely, like, mm-hmm. it, they're yeah. doing it for I love. Right. Not, there's right. no. It's just. It's just more work. Yeah. You know, they got. <laughs> they got a day today. job and they do this on top yeah. of that, right? Yeah. So I thank you for for doing that. It Absolutely. means a lot, and I guarantee you, you probably don't really understand how important what appreciate how appreciative they are. Yeah. Like it's really special. Yeah. Thank I still you for talk doing to them to the day. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I would say one other answer to that though. Um, and that maybe you guys can help with this is I, I think one of the greatest skills and opportunities that goes unmet is, and it's, and it's probably wrapped up in personality is that you got to know how to work a room. Mm-hmm. Like we have a, a zillion events. You can come to like one of our tailgates. You're walking amongst giants in right. industry. They're all just wandering around there yeah. and you can walk them, talk to any of them and they will tell you their story. They'll help you. And so I wish there was like a class that you took before you gra- that every kid that graduated says, you know how to work a room. If you go in a room, come home with three names mm, that you mm, met, knew. Mm. Just make it a thing. And I, I will guarantee you, whatever you're trying to do, you're one or two degrees of separation from somebody who can help you and more importantly will help you. Yeah, right. And right. wants to help you and will be Alex. rewarded here yeah, in right. helping you. You just got to do it. I cannot tell you how many times I, I – I see, and they're on their phone or they're in the corner. <laughs> yeah. I said, man, you got to learn how to work this room. Yeah, right, like yeah. the world, your network is your net worth. Mm, yeah. You got to know how to do it. Right? And I've seen that. Well I think said. that like, like when people get to the point that you've gotten in your career or in their respective careers, like they've done it already. Mm-hmm. They've yeah. done the thing successfully. And they kind of, at this point, they're like, all right, how can I help? How yeah. can I teach? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How can yeah. I pass this knowledge on? That's so like, right. it, we just... I'll tell you, getting getting them off their phones, getting the young ones off their phones. <laughs> right. it, it's about yeah. all the any of us. Yeah, there's a social right network now. right in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just it's, they got legs and arms and they're walking around. Yeah. They're just not on a phone. That's a right. really good way. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Oh, okay, Chuck. Uh, you talked about walking amongst giants whenever we got these type of functions and engagement events. Five hundred thousand alumni. Strongest alumni. 570,000. 570,000. Yeah. Yeah. At least round up to 600. Like, 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 you don't round up. You don't round up. Round up. Yeah. 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 No, but my question for you, let's have a little bit of fun with this. Out of all the alumni we have in our network, who's on your Mount Rushmore? Oh, the four Ooh. greatest tech oh. Okay, oh, now, wait, on He's now. like, that wasn't wow. in the script. That wasn't in the script. <laughs> Final yeah. four. Wow. That's a good one. Bro. That's like asking who your favorite kid is. Yeah. Like, so, <laughs> so who's your favorite no, kid? There's no like, <laughs> great answer I'm going to give you. You won't get in trouble that when you say me. <laughs> you won't Especially get in like, trouble. Besides y'all. Uh, <laughs> just nice. name the same thing Nobel Prize winner. You'll be good. It's like eight of them. You're good. I'll try to answer that a couple ways. Well, 
I'll keep it real with y'all. Tom Landry. Mm, he's right. a pretty good alum, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Trivia, you can, uh, I think his hat's at the Stark Center. You remember the old yeah. Yeah. Fedora? Yeah. I think yeah. you can go see it at the Stark Center, mm -hmm. just if anybody's interested love in that. that one. Um, I actually love uh, the sort of, uh, and, he, and of course you got Minister of Culture and you have mm -hmm. uh, all the sort of the, the fame and popular folks that we have, but um some of the most interesting people I met, you know, like uh, Larry Temple was the chief staff of LBJ mm -hmm. alum. Mm -hmm. The bill of listen. Shout out, shout out to Lawrence, our lawyer as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like the stories, like it's, it's, I mean, sure. We've got the Matthews and yeah. the Vince Young, like the really y'all, of course. Right. And there's, and there's, <laughs> and, and the beauty of it, there's, it, it's the, it's the, uh, it's just, there's so many. Um, but, um, there's some amazing people that a lot of people probably hadn't heard of that. Um, there's a, um, I remember my, my first week here, uh, Chris and I were kind of hired at around the same time. And, um, you know, he started rapidly fun. Remember Chris's old story about all the trophies in the storage building mm -hmm. and all that. So mm -hmm. yeah. he and I got together and sat on the couch in my office and we we're like the new, new folk, new guys here. And he said, let's, I said, we need to get out and see our people people and we've talked about it. so we did a coaches tour for a couple of years you, i don't know if you guys remember that but we took yep. the coaches yep. to oh, yeah. 10 markets the first mm -hmm. year and five markets and whatnot um but i would listen i went on that first trip with him first couple and, and i listened to him tell all those stories uh about the trophies and the heismans and the swimming championships and all that and in matching them in cardboard boxes and he was fundraising for the for the uh, north end right. project right which was is beautiful, mm -hmm. and and I don't want y'all to take this is gonna come. I, I gotta like phrase this <laughs> no, the right way saying, with the current we, company. Uh, it's saying. like we have uh, you know five six hundred student athletes on campus, mm -hmm. and that Hall of Fame is beautiful. Yeah, we have forty nine thousand five hundred of everybody else, mm -hmm. right? And so I start thinking it's like we should figure out a way, and I haven't completely decoded how to do this. What's that Hall of Fame? What's that yeah. Hall of Fame oh, look yeah, like? Yeah, right? yeah, it's like, like how do we create yeah. that in our world? Because there, that is the most amazing thing about my job is every day when you think you know it or heard it, someone else tells you a story. I listen to the, we have a guy named Hum Mandel that was an engineer. You know the Mars rover that just landed? Mm -hmm. Well, he built that thing. Like mm -hmm. now he's an older yeah. gentleman. It was early generation, but yeah. like we, that, that guy's a longhorn. Yeah. I like, can probably change the world. You know, yeah. if Elon Musk gets his way. We're all going to be living there someday. Yeah. And <laughs> there will be our little UT Rover waiting for us. Like, well, if, that's that's a, a, if there's oceanfront property on Mars, I hope our Rover's sitting on it. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck's like, already working on the chapter, the Mars chapter. Of the <laughs> right now. All right. All right. Yeah. Oh, man. That's amazing. So, yeah, well, yeah probably the less heralded would be on my less known, but uh, well, I love more interesting. I love that too. The uh, man, I got a question for you, Chuck. So this is there's there, you guys have a uh, we originally got connected through one of the programs you were doing through the Longhorn Business Network, mm -hmm. and I and I love that. But I think you guys have a lot of initiatives. Can you go into some of those and talk a little bit about how yeah. those work? I know you got some ones. Yeah, that, no, the are, Longhorn Business Network is our is. Uh, it really was kind of born at the same time we did like hooked in, and I have to like always. People sort of conflate and it's different. Like, so hooked in is really, is it's, think of it as like LinkedIn for Longhorns. It's like you mm -hmm. get in, you connect with people, you know, and, and it's, it feels very much like LinkedIn, but it's a curated, I've got 14 or 15 of campus partners, so McCombs and Moody, so we've gotten the other colleges to get on. And so it's like promote to the students, put, get alumni to connect, and we will make student connections out of it with alums who, everything from, what should I major in to, hey, I'm moving to Boston, where should I live? You know, all of that full spectrum. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we started thinking, and, and that was really born out of, we, we thought we needed to do it, but the COVID really drove it. Like we gotta figure out how to throw a lifeline in here where there were some pretty dire predictions. Similarly, um, we live in a town, uh, I was in the private sector most of my career, all my career, except for the last seven years I've been doing this. Um, and you run across, we have, founders and makers and CEO. And I cannot tell you, like I had a one business in Washington, DC. Uh, I then we, that had a transaction. I moved to LA. We sold that to another company that lived in LA. LA was a pretty interesting stint everywhere. I went out there, Well, if you want to see, be a CEO, you got to go to Stanford. I'm like, uh, no, you don't. <laughs> you don't need to go to Stanford, BCO. You go to the university of Texas. I, I said, we have more CEO. Oh, this is being recorded. No, so. no, 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 
disrespect. Say that, no no, disrespect. No, 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 no disrespect. You gonna go Kanye? Go Kanye. Don't get on here and be nice with it. We got more CEOs. We got more. I would say. I would argue. I would argue. We we have more. They're they're a lovely school. I don't need to get letters tomorrow. Beautiful school. If you got your MBA there, love you. Great campus. Great campus. Beautiful part of the world. But the reality is, you're a Longhorn running a business and you're. Board members, or you know, you're take, you're getting that right. Yeah. Said he died of it, and so I came back and got here and said, "Hey, when one of the things we can do, and it, it was sort of accelerated by the by the pandemic, is the power of our network. If you're y'all, a lot of y'all have businesses that you're mm -hmm. that you're running. The single in my career and the three businesses that I've had, the single most important thing were." Somebody that introduced me to somebody or someone who had done a connection I made mm -hmm. in my business, in my industry, that changed the fate, the fate of what I was doing in some way. And I think about our 570,000 alums, and I think, man, we have so, we're a school that produces creators of things. Mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. It just is. Your experience here, it's boundaryless. When you come here at the university, there's no one saying can't, they're saying can and how, yeah. right? And so, yeah. um, so the idea was like, if we could figure out a way to harness that. So the first problem is we have so many of us, we can't find each other. Like mm -hmm. if you're, if you're, uh, and, and it, some of this came out of athletics. Like I would get a call from Kevin Washington and he's one time called and said, Hey, we've got a player who wants to, is interested in, in franchising. Do yeah. you guys have anybody that, that does that? And so I knew a person, a person on my staff's dad did uh, hair salon franchises. So we connected them. There's special sauce to franchise that connection right there. That right. athlete in one phone call learned more about how to franchise yeah. something yeah. than all the Google searches in the world <laughs> would have right. pr produced. Again, how do we do that scale? How do we create this environment where we can all connect? So we created something called the Longhorn Business Network. Go to TexasXS.org, look for a business. If you're a, if you have a business, if you're a founder, if you're uh, a C-suite person. Put your business in there. It's free. It's like Yelp for long. You go in, you put it, and it'll be on our website. We have th thousands in it today. And if if you go to Houston, you want to find uh, anything. You go in. You go. I'm Houston. I want a uh, an attorney. Click it. It will it will yield. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we can find each other. Wow. Yeah. The first the hardest part is we're everywhere. How do we find each other? Yeah, yeah. On top of that, so that's that's uh, again using um, analogies. That's sort of the Yelp. Uh, way to do it because you can sort and filter and that sort of thing and it's free above that we sell a membership so it's a thousand bucks a year and that what that gives you is we'll give you uh, visibility in the all quality magazine we have curated networking events so we'll invite you to an event um, we've had a career day so what we started out this network most of the you know in my job uh, i get a call two or three calls a month that goes something like this Hey brother, I just come up with a new barbecue sauce. Can you help me market that to the five hundred and seventy thousand clubs? So like, that that call, right? Uh, or a new rub or something. And I'm like, love you, brother, but I just can't market every barbecue sauce that comes down there. Uh, but I'll say, send me some. We'll send. Some. I'll taste it. I'll taste it for you. But so this is a home for that. Like, and so we initially thought what we're really what because I get so many of those calls. I thought, well, this would be a great way for us to like take that person who's we want to help and support, but I just don't have the cycles to do the one-on-one -on -one connections for all that is I'll put up, I'll create a platform yeah. where I can let that connection just happen organically. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. And then that's freebie. Like I just good on you. You yeah. guys connect, you do it. Fantastic. Yeah. The membership part of it unlocks. Um, so, so, so the, I'll call these stuff. So what we learned in that after we had done a few of those is people were really needing talent. So we're on the one when it's like any new business, all of you that launch a business, most business plans started as a business plan. The prospectus on the liquidity event generally never looks like the business plan. It has, right. Right. it's not a straight right. arc, it's a <laughs> curvy line, but you know, yeah. right? That's true. Um, the, the, uh, so much demand, Can we need talent, we need to hire, we can't find this, it's too hard to hire that. And so we start, we create a career day. So if you're a member of the network, we'll produce a career day for you. And we'll bring, we have 800 kids on scholarship. We have lots. We'll bring talented kids to you, young adults, for people looking to hire people. And that turns out to be, again, completely unexpected. Had no idea that was what the, 
value prop of this thing was going to be. And, and so we started creating those. And so we network, we create community and events. We give you a brand exposure in our magazine, most read magazine out there still paper magazine, six years, beautiful. Uh, and then we'll help you build a, a rock star team. Uh, and we're just getting started And that thousand dollars. We are a nonprofit. So I then it's going my, I don't get a bonus based right. on how that big or <laughs> small that is. Right. It is about the sport. You're supporting the nonprofit and you're mm -hmm. supporting all the work we do. And, and our mission, you know, the best year for a nonprofit is for my revenue to equal my expense. And I have zero. That's, mm -hmm. that's so what I make, mm -hmm. I spend yeah. not in, uh, you know, new lavish things. It's in the mission of the business. Right. That's, that's how you maintain a nonprofit and don't get in trouble with the IRS. Right, right. You know, they start getting, IRS gets interested when, <laughs> when, when it starts not looking like that. Right. Um, so no, that makes sense, man. You're doing the Lord's work. Yeah. Give me, yeah. give me, give me, give me a question. So you talked about, you know, Rockstar connections. You talked about how Longhorns, you know, we, we like to fellowship in epic yeah. ways. Yeah. <laughs> There's like no it. better Can place. Can I use that? Can I borrow that? Yeah. Yeah. You right. the one that's it. All right. All right. <laughs> There's no better place to fellowship in an epic way than in the pregame tailgate sure. that you all host. Mm. Yes. What goes into making that happen and how did it formulate to be as big of an event as it is yeah. every single week? Well, it's part, um, there's a lot of elements to that. Um, it starts and ends with like our staff volunteer. Really? Listen to me now, volunteer to put that event on, Damn. on Saturdays, now seven Saturdays, plus well, six, now right. seven. Right. Um, so we have a wildly dedicated staff employees that, that want to celebrate together. Wow. And this is like, we sort of view ourselves as the back porch of the university. So this is, you come, we're going to have some sweet tea or whatever, whatever we might be drinking that day. Uh -huh. uh, and we're going to have some fun. And, and as Chris, I say, the, they, they are, this is where we all get together and we're right across the street. Mm -hmm. It is also part like when we, we, we are a member organization. So y'all are life members, right? Yes, sir. Everybody yes, sir. nod up yep. down. All right. Yeah. If you're not, you go to the website. <laughs> um, that keychain gets you a, gets you into that tailgate. So you just show your, so it's a, it's a member privilege. Mm -hmm. And so it's created for our life members and, and all our members, but but for our, in particular our life members, you you will always have a home on game day at our at our building. And as SCC comes to town, I have a feeling mm -hmm. that's going to be a pretty valuable keychain as, as we get closer to it. Um, but it, it started really as a member benefit, um, but it, it is just because of the convening power of that football game. I mean, you could have a, a tic tac toe, toe game break out, and if a lot of people come, we'd have a tailgate for it. Like you know, so so if it if it was, it's the convening power of the event. We're all together. It's like, well, we're gonna of course, as alumni, want to celebrate in some way. So we start three hours before the game, and we go up uh, to the end. When you uh, sit down and talk to Longhorns across the world, is is football one of the first topics of conversation? Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, <laughs> it, yeah, it's either, um, can you help my son get it or daughter get in the school? <laughs> in which case, that which I say, no, we, I can't help you with that. And then the next, it, either like, sort of like neck and neck on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, football is big. Um, the, uh, you know, the excitement about the conference move is huge. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, we got Georgia, you know, so we're, we're kind of batting down the hatches, you know, I think we've got to learn, but yes, it's a, it's a big question. Yeah. yeah. And you know, we've had, um, it's been a little bumpy road, you know, for a while. So, <laughs> but I would tell you back to the, but I think part of the reason why is there is absolutely like, you know, I had the privilege of living out in LA when we had our, in, in our day. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I've had I have two children. I've had a lot of great things in my life. There was nothing like, <laughs> nothing like B.Y. putting that thing. <laughs> that, Put that and, over and, his kids. And, and, and living there. Oh, oh, yeah. And, and yeah. living there. Like, like it was. In trouble when he's going to be on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't say yeah. it was better. Yeah, okay. Okay. I said it was okay. not, okay. not yeah. unlike. Okay. Okay. Believe me. Okay. Believe me. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. That's a but, and, and we want that back. Like mm -hmm. it was, it was magic. Like yep. the whole, uh, it was really like, it's tingly. Like, 
And I was in uh, Tuscaloosa last year, and it, oh, you, yeah. we got a little, the little the taste drip. of it. You yeah. know, that yeah. IV bag, that yeah. IV yeah. bag started tripping again. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. We're like, oh man, yeah. I got ooh, yeah. that warm. <laughs> right. I remember this yeah. feeling. I remember this feeling. Right. right. So it, you know, and there, so there's a lot of excitement over that. Um, and it was, and it was because we're all together. We got to experience together. You know, the whole thing was fantastic. Yeah. And so I think there's people yearn to get back to that. Like that was that felt great. Um, and pride it was prideful, right? You kind of touched on it a little bit, but I want you to go into detail for those that are watching that are not a part of the prestigious club. How does one become a part of the Texas X? Fantastic. Um, well, you can join us. It's all on our website. So you can go, we have a, you can join as a life member. It's a thousand bucks for life. And, I'll go ahead and say it now. It won't be the last time we ask you for money. So don't think you join <laughs> once and it's over. Um, but, but, but we'll ask you to support. We'll ask you to support the things you love, right? So we're always about that. Um, or you can join as an annual member and it's like 60 bucks a year. So think of it as a latte a month kind of a thing. So, um, but, but again, you guys, you, we're member funded. Right. Like we survived the pandemic. Like we're, nonprofits are not well built or mm -hmm. massive disruption in top line revenue. Mm -hmm. Cause as I said, best nonprofit revenue equal expense. So you build an expense structure mm -hmm. that equals your revenue to stay out of trouble with the IRS. Well, when 30% when of your revenue goes away. That don't mean that the expenses go away. Right. right. And our mm -hmm. alumni, y'all yeah. saved us. They mm -hmm. all stepped up and said, mm -hmm. so, you know, there are moments like that in any story of any business or any enterprise Absolutely. where moments of truth, and that was a moment of truth. And we have, loyal supporters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I went to every game in that year, that the COVID year, and I mm -hmm. stood out in front of our building. We were closed, like, you know, the mayor said, no groups mm -hmm. bigger than 10 or whatever, right. whatever it was at the time. And I just, my wife and I and Carol Barrett, one of our long-term employees, we stood out and just welcomed, we got our, well, we technically, we had our mask on, but we, <laughs> we might not have had our mask on. But, uh, <laughs> May or may not have had a mask on, um, but uh, we had people come up, and I had a lady one day that came up, and she's had lost her job, and she said, "I love, I, I'm, I'll still make my annual gift to y'all." And she's looking for, I mean, wow. that's the kind of people we have out there. Wow. And, and when you think about how scary that time was, uh, yeah. but they were like story and story after that. It was yeah. fantastic. Really yeah, fun. got good people. Wow. Well, Chuck, I mean, this was awesome. I think we could probably talk to you all day, but we, we, uh, we're going to let you get on your way. Yeah. But uh, we'd love to have you back again, man, and give us some updates. And thank sure. you so much for coming My by. My pleasure. Y'all join the Business Network. You're an entrepreneur right here, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I go put the. I brought my uh, credit card processor with me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sign you up. Okay. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Awesome. Thanks, Chuck. Thank y'all. Appreciate Thank you, all we can do.